are now about to witness the strength of knowledge. This is Steve Dace. Raising a banner of bold colors, no pale pastels. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Our rights are inherent and essential, derived from our maker. That is liberty, and liberty will reign in America. This is Steve Dace. Come on! Folks, welcome back to the show. Hey, Deneen Borelli and Tom Borelli are in the house this evening, holding it down for Mr. Dace. That number is 866-970-9622. Dr. Tom, we have our next guest on the line. I feel like we've known her for many, many years. And, and folks, when we talk about the, the power of social media, our next guest is someone that we actually met on social media. It's Dr. Lee Vliet. Dr. Vliet, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You're so welcome, Deneen. It's always a pleasure to be with you and Tom. We appreciate it. Folks, Dr. Vliet is the founder of Hormone Health Strategies Medical Practices in Tucson, Arizona, and Dallas, Dallas Texas and is a member of the Board of Directors of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons and a nationally recognized speaker. Uh, very serious topic we wanted to talk to you about, uh, Dr. Vliet, and recent news uh, has shown that infectious diseases are being carried into the United States via refugees and illegal immigrants, uh, there is a Breitbart report. Uh, there's a 11 cases of active tuberculosis with refugees coming into Florida between 2013 and 2015. And this report comes on the heels of a report of four refugees having TB in Indiana in 2015. What is the public health risk to the general population with all of this information? Well, Denine, it's really serious risk because TB has now exceeded HIV AIDS as the leading infectious disease cause of death worldwide. So when we talk about tuberculosis, it's one of the most lethal infectious diseases in history. It's easily transmitted. It, people transmit it by coughing and sneezing in the air. It's transmitted in crowded conditions, buses and train stations and airports and community get-togethers and schools. So the fact that the United States, which has done one of the best jobs in the world of screening and treating and getting eliminating, almost eliminating tuberculosis, is very significant that now we are being faced with refugees from countries where there's a very high rate of tuberculosis. Let me give you a couple of examples that I think may may help people understand the risk. The United States has a risk of tuberculosis of about 0.1 death from tuberculosis for every 100,000 residents. But when we look at some of the countries that are the top sources for the refugees and the illegal immigrants that are crossing the border illegally in, in Arizona and Texas and Southern California and even coming into Florida and some of the northern border states. We're looking at countries of origin, Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, the Democrat Republic of Congo, Myanmar, China, Vietnam. These countries have far higher rates. For example, Somalia is one of the top countries of origins for resettled refugees in Minnesota, North Dakota, and Tennessee. Somalia has a rate of tuberculosis death 670 times greater than the United States. Afghanistan's rate of death from tuberculosis is 440 times greater than the United States. Even China which is the lowest among some of the of the top 10 countries for the refugees or illegal border crossers, even China's rate is 28 times the U.S. So when we see countries of origin for the illegal border crossers and the refugees that are being fast-tracked through the process of resettlement in the United States, 
and they are bringing some of the most serious forms of tuberculosis and lots of other infectious diseases. We've, we're focusing on tuberculosis because there have been more cases announced recently in the northern border states in Indiana, in Florida, Kansas. So it's beginning to pop up all over the place. There were 89 cases of tuberculosis in the New Mexico, New, um, Atresia, New Mexico Detention Center in 2014 that I wrote about, but the public was never informed about the risk. And the public is not being informed. We knew about the cases in Minnesota and Wisconsin in 2014, and it's 2016 before this is being announced by Breitbart and Drudge and Walnut Daily and some of the online media, the mainstream media, have not been addressing it. We've also seen that CDC warned their workers in the summer of 2014 about the risk of tuberculosis in the illegal border crossers and the refugees that the CDC workers were exposed to. They never made that public. And the CDC is not even following the recommendations of its own experts. Seven experts from CDC recommended screening for tuberculosis prior to entry into the United States. And it's not being done. And that's CDC's own experts. So we have a serious problem, and it's a costly one as well as a risk to the health and safety of Americans. It's a huge burden for the taxpayers. In a simple case of tuberculosis, costs over $17,000 $17,000 in 2010 dollars to treat. When you start getting into the more serious multidrug resistant tuberculosis that is the co- most common form coming in now, you're looking at anywhere from $135,000 per patient up to $150,000 or more. And if you get into the extreme forms, it's over $430,000 per patient. Those costs are paid by the working people in the United States who don't even know that their tax dollars are being used to pay for free medical care for these people when Americans are struggling under the rising cost of this debacle of Obamacare with premiums and fewer doctors and medication shortages and all of that. It's a perfect storm waiting to happen. Dr. Vliet, you I guess what I find most concerning is certainly the illegal uh, illegals coming over, aliens carrying disease, that's one issue. But the other issue is refugees of which we know who is coming. Now, why, what kind of justification that they that there's no screening for disease and as part of the requirement to accept people in the United States. Well, Tom, there has always been a requirement that people coming through the legal immigration process are screened medically. I mean, someone criticized me for saying that we should be screening people because I have I received a one of the Ellis Island Medal of Honor Awards in 2014, and they accused me of being a, a traitor, so to speak, to Ellis Island. It's like, read your history. Ellis Island was the very place where all of this screening was done for infectious disease, and people were turned away at Ellis Island. They were screened by medical people at the time based on the techniques we had available And if they had evidence of infectious disease, they were sent on a ship back to Europe. They were not allowed to land and stay in the United States, or they were quarantined. So Ellis Island was, we've been screening immigrants from the very beginning in the United States because we have an obligation to the safety of Americans. It's it's just common sense. CDC, any of your listeners can go on the CDC website, as I've done, and look at what they require for legal immigrants coming into the United States in the way of medical testing, all of these medical tests are required to be done for legal immigrants. And they are the political leadership of 
the CDC now is fast-tracking the refugee resettlement. They're not putting them through the screening, and they're not even following their own guidelines. That's the appalling part. The guidelines are in place. Our current administration and leadership of the CDC are not following them and endangering Americans, particularly children and elderly are very vulnerable to diseases like tuberculosis. And Dr. Vleet, I I really hate to cut you off. Uh, This is always a great conversation with you. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. We do appreciate it and appreciate all you do. You're so welcome. Have a great night. Folks, we're going to take that break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. You are listening to Steve Dace. I like you. 